everybody, Kim West, the Sleep Lady, and on this episode of the Gentle Parenting Show, I'm so excited to have my colleague, uh, Robin Green, who is a pediatric acupuncturist. Can't wait to talk about acupuncture and how we can help our babies. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much for having me, Kim. I'm so delighted to be here and talk to your, you and your audience. Yeah, and I'm excited. Uh, Robin is also, um, her work's going to be featured in my upcoming book, uh, The Newborn, The Sleep Lady's Gentle Newborn Sleep Guide. And um, But in this podcast, we'll get a chance to go, dive a little bit deeper than we could in the book. And so let's start off by talking about how does it work, pediatric acupuncture, you know, like acupuncture with babies and to use needles, or how does it work? Great question. And a lot of parents are probably a little skeptical or a little worried about the idea of children, babies, needles. So I just want to reassure them first thing that when I say pediatric acupuncture, what we're really talking about is stimulating the acupuncture points. And that can be with acupressure. It can be with phototherapy. Mm -hmm. It can be with needles. So there's many different ways that we can stimulate the acupuncture points without using needles at all so that it's very safe, very gentle, (laughs) (laughs) Um, and very effective for babies. And when Mm -hmm. it comes to pediatric acupuncture, it's nothing like an adult visit at all. So when you think of an adult acupuncture visit, you go in and, you know, you maybe talk to your acupuncturist, you lay on the table, they place the needles and you rest for, you know, somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes. But for Mm -hmm. for our kiddos, it's totally different. So we come in and talk to the parents, find out what's going on, and then we may do a massage. We may do Mm. a little bit of laser therapy on the acupuncture points. In older children, we may bring in the needles. And when we do, it's very quick. So children's bodies have so much energy dedicated towards mm-hmm. growth and development, which means mm-hmm. we they don't need to rest with the needles for 30 minutes for them to be effective. Mm-hmm. So even the youngest child or even a baby, we might do in and out. Like we literally right. tap it in, take it out just like that, really fast and simple. And we mm-hmm. know it doesn't hurt because babies don't cry during the treatment. Like they're distracted, mm-hmm. they're having fun playing and the needle goes in and out and they have, they have no idea what just happened because it really what is what is more effective or affects children more is apprehension and fear can make them afraid Mm -hmm. of the needle. But a baby who's say nine months old with, with, um, you know, digestive issues, they, they don't know, they don't know to be afraid of it. And so it goes in and out and it's so painless. They have no idea what just happened. Awesome. Well, that's a huge relief, I'm sure for lots of listeners. So, you know, so many questions. So how about age? What is the age range or how early could uh, you get started? Right. So I've treated newborns. Mm -hmm. I've treated, you know, teenagers. So really anything within that range, what changes is how we approach the treatment. So for a newborn, I'm more likely to use laser therapy, uh, gentle massage techniques and so on to balance their system. Whereas an 18 year old, I'm going to treat them pretty much like an adult with the needles and everything if they're, if that's acceptable to them. Okay. So tell us about laser acupuncture. I've never experienced that. Yes. Yeah. Phototherapy is an incredible, powerful, incredibly powerful modality. And we usually we, we use uh, blue and red lasers and we simply apply them to the acupuncture point in the same way we would a needle, except it's just phototherapy. And the photons from light actually stimulate your mitochondria. We can actually measure those photons up the meridian. So if I apply a laser here, we can actually measure the light coming out of the end of the meridian up here. It's really incredible. Wow. So we know that the lasers actually can affect the entire acupuncture meridian. And mm-hmm. it's so easy, gentle, and effective for kids, and adults love it too. So it's a great mm-hmm. tool. So if you're looking for a pediatric acupuncturist, you know one of the things you can ask for is, do you use phototherapy on the acupuncture points as a modality instead of needles? And that is one of the most well-accepted methods mm-hmm. for children today. Mm-hmm. 
and probably gentle and less nerve wracking for the parent who might still be worried about the needles. Right. And, yeah. you know, honestly, it's like the, the kids love seeing, like, especially on when I do laser on the hands, it lights up your hands. And so sometimes we'll turn the lights off in the room and it's like, it's a, oh. we make it fun. You know, the yeah. pediatric treatments are always fun and playful and going with the flow of the child so that, you know, it's a good experience because we can't heal if we're crying or upset. Right. Right. So. Right. So, oh, that sounds amazing. I, I'll have to try that. And maybe next time we see each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so let's go because I have. I'm thinking way down the road, like, well, which types of ailments are best for laser or for, why don't we first talk about, about what are some typical, um, symptoms or ailments that you treat with acupuncture that are really wonderful. Um, to yes. Be treated with great acupuncture. question. So in the mm -hmm. early stages of life, we mm -hmm. help with colic, mm -hmm. with failure to thrive, Mm -hmm. um, any kind of digestive issues that are going on if, you're, if your baby is constipated or having loose stools, mm -hmm. sleeping issues, um, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes children come on and their nervous system is just really sensitive. And so like they might yeah. respond to, you know, ambient sounds very much disturb them or they have trouble settling down and getting into a deep sleep. So even at the youngest ages, we can use something as simple as an ear massage to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and drop them into a deeper restful state. Then as children get older, they get into school, the school years, we mm -hmm. might treat them for anxiety. We might treat them for, um, again, digestive issues come up a lot, mm -hmm. um, learning problems, focus, um, ADHD yeah. symptoms and things like that. So Really, anything we could treat an adult for, we can right. work, we can treat children for as well. So, and I would imagine when you said digestive disorders, that might be things like reflux, milk protein yes. allergies, those kinds of things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That um, we have, I worked with a lot of kids with food sensitivities mm -hmm. and, you know, working to help them be able to heal their gut and their digestion so that they can, you know, eat some of these foods that are triggering symptoms mm. and constipation, diarrhea, loose stools, tummy aches, yeah. belly aches, really right. anything to do with pain can be a wonderful way to address it naturally right. with acupuncture right. point stimulation. Okay. So, and then same with colic, also acupressure. Yes. Acupressure, mm -hmm. massage. You know, we also, in the young stages, we look at mom and baby as a unit. They're, they're mm -hmm. together. So really mm -hmm. the treatment principles focus on both how can we support mom and her digestion in order to support baby and their digestion to ease colic and other symptoms like that. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So you had mentioned to me earlier that there's just some nice kind of massage and soothing point that a parent could could do right now to see how their baby responds. Could you show us some of those? Absolutely. So one of my mm -hmm. favorite things is to start out with an ear massage because mm -hmm. there are so many nerve endings in the ear that connect with the message centers of the brain and can activate our vagus nerve, which is what turns off our stress response and activates our ability to rest, digest, and sleep. And so I have a little ear model here to okay. show everyone. So Perfect. a little easier than showing my ear. Yeah. Um, and so what we do is we just kind of start at the top and we just mm -hmm. massage down the ear. By the way, like are the, this. is this is that the same way we would do it on our own ears as adults? Yes, exactly. Okay. So people can Perfect. follow along Perfect. right now. Then okay. we massage the you know the earlobe, uh -huh. and then you want to massage the the tragus or the um, triangular fossa here, and then we massage uh -huh. down these parts. Of, and I'm just going in circles. It's nothing. It's not just very gentle. Mm -hmm. You want to have firm but gentle pressure. We don't want to do it so hard that our baby's like you know pulling yeah. away from us because right. really this should feel good to them. So then we go down here and then we get into the concha here and you just kind of stick your finger in and do a little massage around the concha. Now this section right here, this is uh -huh. called the helix root and yeah. right there, mm -hmm. let's see if I can get the picture I up closer, right there. Um, this spot is one of the strongest points for stimulating the vagus nerve. 
So if you only did one thing on the ear, I would recommend massaging right in here. Mm. So when you're and feeling stressed, anxious, whatever. Exactly. Like on yourself, you, mm -hmm. I have my earbuds in, but yeah, you, um, you would mm -hmm. go in and massage that. And then mm -hmm. this, this, this section of the ear is called the concha. Mm -hmm. So just anything in this section here is also very strongly innervated. So just coming okay. around and massaging and then you just start it over again, do it for like, you know, for 30 seconds on a very young, you know, newborn or young baby mm -hmm. to a couple of minutes on an older child or teenager. And this is something that they can do on their own. Yeah. And both ears at the same time or one ear at a time? I mean, it, I think it feels great to do both at the same time because yeah. you can sit, really sit there and just get, get those points, massaging them, you know, and you don't have to do it in that specific order. You just really want to cover the whole ear mm -hmm. um, with whatever mm -hmm. feels good. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if, if you've ever been to a massage therapist and at some point mm -hmm. they massage your ears. Yes. Feels Love so that. good, yeah. right? Feels so good. Um, and so it's very, very calming. And then some other calming massages that I absolutely love um, start with this point here, yin tong, and you can just do a like gentle tapping. Or what I like to do a lot of times is rubbing up the meridian up to mm -hmm. the hairline, uh -huh. just, you know, over and over again. This massage can be very, very calming. And then over the eyebrows as mm -hmm. well, just. I remember a few years ago on YouTube, there was a video of a dad putting his infant to sleep by touching like that yes. on the forehead. And it, it kind of appeared magical and he wasn't claiming to do it in terms of acupuncture. He was just like, I found this magic touch on my baby and it magically yes. put her to sleep. Little it's did he so know what true. he was really doing. <laughs> right. And you know, these are things that I think are just universal truths that a lot mm -hmm. of parents, we all just can fit. We figure it out on our own, mm -hmm. but then once we know, we can actually just be more deliberate about yeah. like, these are actually, you know, very important pathways. The other one I like <laughs> on adults is just from the center of the forehead just moving out this direction. So starting mm. at the center and moving out. And like on a baby, you can literally do this with your thumbs. Thumbs, yeah. Where you just go this way. And it's it's just, it stimulates all of the acupuncture points related to calming the brain and the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So it's very relaxing, very soothing to, mm -hmm. to babies. And it's just really a matter of finding like the right pressure. Mm -hmm. And when you do, they respond. So they will tell you by, you'll see them kind of close their eyes You'll see them just sort of start to relax. That little arm flops over. Right. And as they get older, they begin to request these things. They want, mm -hmm. they request their massage time. Most parents mm -hmm. give it a fun little name. Right. And, and so they start to request it. It just becomes part of your bedtime routine. Lovely. So you, so you kind of connected those for you, for me. Um, any other things that we can do for our babies for sleep? Because, you know. That is my thing. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So there is an acupuncture point on the wrist. So come down our little pinky side here mm -hmm. and you'll find your tendon. Mm -hmm. And if you go like right on the outside of that tendon there, uh -huh. like, let's see, right? Actually yeah. on the, on the I inside of the it. tendon. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I can see yep. Okay. Inside of the tendon right there. Um, that is a really strong point for stimulating sleep and calming the nervous system, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it when you're about to go to a meeting. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's another, that's another great one. And, you know, I think that also you've probably already talked about this, but, you know, just as children get older, having them, you know, while you're doing acupressure, taking those deep belly breaths. And relaxing another way to stimulate the nervous system. So if you're having them say deep breathe while you're giving them an ear massage or, you know, mm -hmm. um, working on their acupuncture mm -hmm. points, it can be incredibly calming for children. Mm -hmm. And eventually we can teach them how to do these things on their own right. so that they're empowered as well. Absolutely. Yeah. When they get a little bit old enough to do that. And what is, I've often heard this point as being a powerful point in between the thumb and the index finger. Is that something? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. So this point here mm -hmm. is um, called large intestine four mm. and it connects to our large intestine. The channel pathway actually comes all the way up the arm, crosses over the neck 
and comes to the sinuses. So um, when we think about stimulating points, we also think about the pathway of the meridian that 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 point is on. So this point internally connects to our large intestine, so it can be very helpful for constipation mm-hmm. um, issues. It also connects to our sinuses, so we use that point for colds and flus. Mm-hmm. But on mm-hmm. its pathway up, it crosses right over our front teeth, mm-hmm. so we can also use this point for teething and oh, tooth pain as well. Oh, I love that tip. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you don't. it's hard if all you feel like you have in your pocket is Tylenol. You know, or acetaminophen yes. or some of the um, numbing gels. Right, mm-hmm. right. And so this is a, a great way that you can mm-hmm. you can literally, like I, I used to tell my patients, every diaper change, stimulate this point for their teething. Like we just, if you can connect it to something you're doing on a regular basis uh-huh. and you stimulate it, because really acupressure itself, you want to do it three to five times a day and you want to do it for 30 seconds to a minute each time. And so if we can connect it to something we're already doing, so it's either connected to meal time, it's connected to diaper change time that makes it easy to remember to do it so that we can get the, the results that we're looking for. So remember the threes, three times a day for at least 30 seconds. Is that right? Yep. Okay. That's correct. And right. Yeah. If you build it into a routine, then it just becomes part of what you do. Exactly. Excellent. And so how does a parent know whether they should um, search for an acupuncturist who uses the, the laser versus the needles versus the pressure, or even I've heard Chinese medicine too, intermix. Yes, right. Well, I think when parents are looking for, if your child has something going on, and it can be something from an acute cough, fever, something that's just not resolving in a timely manner, to something more chronic, like if your child has chronic constipation or incopresis or chronic sleep issues, Uh then... And you're looking for a natural way that works with the body, mm-hmm. that is safe, it's drug free. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes we bring in very gentle, safe herbal formulas for children. Mm-hmm. That might be the time to look for an acupuncturist. And you want to look for someone that has experience and extra training. So okay. they would need to have some kind of postgraduate training in pediatrics. Okay. There is no like pediatric board at this point. Mm-hmm. So you know, you want to look for additional training and mm-hmm. you want to make sure that they have tools other than needles mm-hmm. because the the reason why I had such success with children is that I was able to adjust my treatments to whatever was going to work for that child. Mm-hmm. So you really want to look for somebody who has a lot of different tools who can adjust and move on the fly yeah. so that they can um, still deliver an effective treatment regardless of which modality we use, acupressure, phototherapy, um, you know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not needles, that's totally fine Mm -hmm. because their bodies are so amazing at healing. Right. We don't necessarily need to do that. So that's something that that's what you'd want to look for. Awesome. And so is there, um, since I understand there's no like board or we're seeing pediatric, um, acupuncturist, is there a general, uh, board or association or regulatory board that oversees acupuncturists so that a parent, no matter where they are, could, go there for a directory to find somebody? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so they would go to nccaom.org, okay. and that is the national certification, so our, our national board licensing. Okay. If they have an, uh, an NCCAOM uh, designation you know, in their credentials, you know you've got someone who has you know, passed um, you know, a rigorous testing mm-hmm. and is going to be able to you know, deliver – exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so with, I thought I heard you say, um, that when, if I were to come in with, let's say a three or four month old, who's Mm -hmm. having a hard time, maybe has like eczema and reflux and lots of crying and sleep disturbance. Um, and I was the parent, I would have to also be treated too often since we're like a diet. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we want to work with mom and baby together Mm -hmm. because there is, um, in Chinese medicine, we, we call, you know, there's 
we are handing over some of our own imbalances to our baby. Mm-hmm. It's not our fault. You know, like it's just part of the, the sort of transfer. We, yeah. we think of it as like a transfer of our essence to our child, mm-hmm. good or bad. Mm-hmm. And if we have our own health struggles, a lot of times those will um, be transferred to our baby. Mm-hmm. So by treating mom, we're also treating the baby. And by treating the baby, we're also supporting mom. So together, that that to me is my ideal to be able to treat both. And regardless of whether you're breastfeeding or not. Yes. Okay. Yes. That makes sense, right? Even just sort of... Yeah. And I don't mean this like too far out wise, sort of energy wise, you yeah. know, and also that, mm-hmm. I, that's a great point mm-hmm. because one of the things I think is so important in Chinese medicine, we have a pathway that runs, um, you know, down the middle of our body and it's called the <laughs> conception vessel and mm-hmm. your baby has one and you have one. And so when you're holding your baby on your heart, on your, on your midline, yeah those two energy channels are meeting up yeah. and it's, it's like, it's like a important connection mm-hmm. that you and your child have together. So like, you know, um, for helping a baby feel secure, sometimes turning them around so that your heart to heart conception vessel to conception vessel mm-hmm. is actually, it's more than just love, you know, loving on your baby. You're actually exchanging energy Lovely. when you're doing that. That's and that, beautiful. that is just like, so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and even in, you know, chi- not in Chinese, even in child development, um, our babies, um, I don't know if the word is right to say believe, but they think of themselves as one with us. And it's only yes. through, you know, separation and individuation that takes many years that they begin to see themselves as, as separate from us. Right, yeah. right. And that's what I, I love about bringing together different traditions and different um, forms of wisdom, mm-hmm. because what we find is that we may have different ways of describing yep. it, but we find these universal exactly. truths over and over again. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. And so where can families find out about your work? And also, I don't know if you want to say a little bit more about your work, because I know that you also have um, the, the ear seeds and which I'm sure probably, I don't know whether you probably recommend those for older kids, but tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, um, yeah, for children ages four and up, like in addition to the ear massage, we have these things called ear seeds. You can see one I'm wearing it next to my Uh earring right now. Uh See if you can see that. Um, it's, and this one is a really fun one. It has a, a crystal on the top and it has a little gold, 24 karat gold bead underneath it. And, um, you know, I have it on a point called master cerebral, which is good for creativity and focus and so forth. So we can actually get very specific on where we place mm-hmm. the ear seeds to help with digestion or sleep or stress or whatever it might be for kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, the, my, when I had my in-person practice, the, the girls, especially the kids loved the crystal ear seeds. They loved wearing right. them. They loved the attention they got right. and it was doing them good yeah. all at once. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, you can, I, I'll, I'll give you a link. You can post to your audience okay. if they're interested in, in checking out more ear seeds and the special kits that we have mm-hmm. that have condition charts and teach parents exactly where to put mm-hmm. them. So you're not, you know, trying to guess, you know, exactly what to right. do. And then um, I also work with clients one-on-one and now I do it all remotely. So I work with a lot of children with eczema, asthma, allergies, um, digestive issues, a lot of food sensitivities um, and behavioral issues. So I'm able to balance the meridians and support the body's healing mechanisms in a different way. Um, now using the, the TCM and Chinese medicine skill sets I have, plus adding on some additional, you know, supportive modalities and we're able to, you know, help these kids so much. Okay. So can you give us an example? Because if you're working with someone like on zoom and you can do teach them about acupressure and, and what other things could you do? Right. So what we, what we look at is really, um, root causes. Mm -hmm. So for kids with chronic issues, we're assessing whether or not they have exposures to things like glyphosate, industrial toxicants, um, mycotoxins, which are mold toxins. So 
the a lot of these kids with um, with eczema, and I, I have an example right now. If I've got an eight year old boy um, in my practice who was having issues with aggression and ticks, and you know, um, doing fine at school, but blowing up with mom and dad at home, mm-hmm. and when we did some testing on him, he ended up having glyphosate levels that were off the charts. Wow. And it turned out that they lived near a golf course, which was being sprayed with Roundup every day. Mm. And Mm -hmm. so once we started using, um, you know, the supportive elements to help his body gently and safely detox Mm -hmm. um, some of these issues, all all of his, like like within weeks, behavioral issues went away, ticks Mm -hmm. went away. Um, And so what we, what I do with the acupuncture piece of that is, that's where we come in and we use acupressure. We use the ear seeds right. to help calm the nervous system and allow the body to enter into a healing state right. so that the body can heal faster. So Amazing. what I'm just finding with kids today is that chronic health issues, a lot of times there's a toxic um, you know, exposures mm-hmm. that are also impacting their body's ability to sure. heal. Yeah. And once we address those, the body, it restores the body's ability and helps them feel better. Amazing. Amazing. (coughs) Sorry about that. That's my little doggy. He had something to say about that. Um, uh, uh, Which by the way, I know that there are acupuncturists who work on animals too, I hear. Um, Yes, that's a whole Mm -hmm. thing too. (laughs) And so where can um, listeners learn more about you, your work and your, um, and your consultation services? Yes. All they have to do is go to Mm robinraygreen.com, R-O-B-I-N-R-A-Y, green like the color, and uh, they'll find out all the information there. Awesome. We will also post that on the sleeplady.com forward slash podcast, which will go to this episode page in addition to ways that they can follow you on social media, if you're on social media. And of course, if you like this episode, please download it and subscribe for more amazing experts like Robin. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us.